Hey, thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at, is the Bible a reliable and coherent story? And this matters because it really answers the question, why should you be Catholic? The story of the Bible, salvation history, what's recorded in the Bible, it, it's at the center of how Catholics understand themselves. So I just want to press into that and see if we can make a little progress. There's a, there's a myth out there, which is that the Bible's not coherent. It's not reliable. It's like kind of just stories made up by Christian communities later. Now, we're not going to be able to get into all, all the details, but I just want to kind of point out a couple things about this. So let's start here. Yes, it is um, coherent and reliable uh, as a book, but it's not just one book, right? The Bible has 73 uh, books. Some versions of the Protestant Bible, 66. The Catholic version, 73 different genres, types of books written by different authors in different languages, you know, there's different kinds of letters and writings. You might say that there's, in those 73, there's 14 narrative books. Narrative in the sense of it kind of moves the story forward, like from the book of Genesis up to the uh, book of Revelation. The story is one story told with a lot of different aspects told in different ways. It's the story of God's covenant with creation. That's the big uh, picture. What's a covenant? I like how in uh, Trent Horn's book, which we're using a lot in this season, Why We're Catholic, in uh, chapter 12, I think, it's his chapter on why we believe in the Bible, he says that covenants are sacred pledges of loyalty. Covenant. I mean, it, was, it wasn't like a religious term necessarily in the ancient world, but covenant is how Jews understood what God was doing with them. And in creation itself. He was making a sacred pledge of loyalty. That's the big picture of the Bible. So please don't lose the forest for the trees on that. You know, you see covenants with Noah. Remember, God makes a covenant with Noah not to destroy the, uh, the earth after the flood. Covenant with Abraham, right? Makes his promise to Abraham to bless him, uh, make him his descendants abundant, etc. Well, there's the very beginning of the Bible, though. It's a covenant with creation. The seven days of creation, the word seven in Hebrew means to literally like covenant. So when God creates the world in seven days, he's like covenanting himself with creation. In other words, all of space and all of time is not just an empty place for random things to happen. All of space and all of time is in fact for a sacred pledge of loyalty between God and his creation. And that opens up the whole narrative. The, this, this epic adventure is around f forming and being faithful to covenant with God. I got this from Bishop Barron, which I think is so wonderful. You could say that the whole story or drama of the Bible is in five acts. Act one is creation. Act two is the fall. The covenant like falls apart. Act three is the first Israel, where God starts his rescue operation. Act four is the new Israel, where God fulfills the old Israel in Jesus and in the church. That's the act that we're living in right now. Final act, the new creation, the eschaton, the fulfillment of all things, you might say the commencement of God's final plan for his creation. So those are the five acts, creation, the fall, first Israel, new Israel, and the new creation. That's the great story. Now, the objection, I, I think, that people will often give to this is something like this. Well, you know, the Bible, it's just, the, that story is oppressive or boring. Like, I want to live my life. I don't want to do God's thing. I want to do my thing. I think the response to that is, really? Really? Like, your, what you can dream up is going to be broader, more expansive, more dramatic, have more at stake, have um, more ups, more downs, like a more sweeping drama than what I just described? I mean, like, no, you can't. Like, good luck. I mean, if you can, that's pretty impressive. But typically, when we try to write our own story, my life is just what I want it to be, that typically ends up being very, very boring. It's like, you know, you know how high school kids, they want to like, I'm going to wear whatever I want, and all they do is just wear exactly what their friends wear? That's a little bit what happens to us in a narrative way. The Bible recounts the sweeping drama of all of space and all of time. Um, I think the real question isn't though, is it a good story? Is it a true story? 
And that touches on the inerrancy of the Bible. Isn't belief in the Bible just circular reasoning? Like, like I don't think it's really true because, look, you believe in the Bible because it's the Word of God. And the church says it's the Word of God, so that's why I believe it. Do you see the, the circular reasoning there? So, look, you, you think it's true because it's the Word of God. But you, you think it's the Word of God because the church, the church says it. So how, how do you get out of that uh, loop? I like how, how Trent in uh, Why We're Catholic, Trent Horn, explains that the church's understanding of this is actually not a circle but a spiral. I look at the New Testament as a, as a Catholic and as a Christian. I look at the New Testament, and I can simply look at it as his, historical, reliable, ancient documents. What I see in there is testimony that Jesus was the Son of God, died, rose from the dead, uh, founds the church, and then the church says that these 73 books— are inspired by God and inerrant. The church gives the authority to clarify the, um, the, see how it's a spiral? Jesus does these things. I have historical documents that point it out. One of the historical things he did was found a church which now risen from the dead. He, he, he operates through the power of his Holy Spirit. And one of the things he did through his church is to establish like the table of contents and that these 73 books are inerrant and the divinely inspired word of God. See, that's a spiral, not a circle. And the, the top of the spiral is, this is not just a good story. This is a true story. So Catholics, we should love the Bible. We should understand that it tells a coherent, true story with all of the variation of the different kinds of books and genres. And at the heart of it is God who is forming a covenant with all of creation. And we're part of that great story.